Hi everyone, welcome back to the Doge Academy and welcome back to introduction to programming using Java. Uh, continuing the logical operators, remember we were talking about the logical operator AND and we saw that the only way to get like a true result, uh, result is to have all the conditions that we are evaluating to be true. And if we have one false, it doesn't matter if it's just one at the beginning, one at the end, one in the, in the middle, uh, everything will be false. So let's see how it works. Let's create here a simple algorithm. Uh, just go back to IntelliJ, then select source, out insert, Java class, and then conditionals05. As you can see, conditionals is a pretty big topic because, well, it's one of the things that we're going to use all the time in your daily life, and it's part of the, the things that make algorithms possible. So let's uh, continue here. Let's do exactly the same example as we did here, uh, because it will be pretty easy to understand. So let's say that we have a name, we have like a credit card number, and we have a valid date. So we don't know any other uh, of like complex types to handle dates, but we are going just to use strings here. So let's just create a string and let's say here, okay, this is the saved name. So basically this is the name saved in the, in the database. So this one will be Alucard. And then we are going to create another string and this one will be credit card number. So the credit card number will be one, two, three. Very simple. And then I'm going to create another string valid uh, until, let's say here, it will be 06, 2022. Okay. So we don't know any complex types. We could use like a numeric value, but let's live like this. Okay. So this, um, let's say that all of them is what we have saved because we don't know how we can actually input values yet. Okay, so we have this kind of stored in the database. And then let's say that we are doing a web request, we are going through a form in the web and we are inputting some values. And then, of course, these values will have to be, um, to be sent to our system and our system will compare. So basically I want to know if we can buy. So here I just, I'm copying and pasting because instead of saved, I would just type input name input credit card number and input valid o2 okay so technically the valid o2 should be a comparison if you are in 2021 it should be too valid but let's just pretend that it needs to be exactly uh, actually let's just change here saved security code there you go and we can use here like uh, 300 and here will be input security code. There you go. And here, instead of 300, let's say that we just made a mistake and we have 30. Now, I want to know if the user can buy. And for that, what are we going to do? We are going to compare everything, every single variable that we have here. And we are going to print like can buy or cannot buy. So if and this if is going to be pretty big. So one thing that you have to be careful is just because how Java handles a string. You cannot, it's actually you can, but uh, it's a bit complex to explain without going through a lot of other details. But in Java, when you are trying to compare strings, you don't use the equal sign. You should call a special method. So for example, I want to know if the saved name is equals to the input name. So you could do this, for example, input name, and this, let's say just a, a message here, for example, uh, same name. If we execute control shift F10, you're going to see that's the same name, but even IntelliJ is giving, hey, you should not use equal sign to compare strings. So we explain this into details and the Java one for all. So how do we compare uh, strings? We should just call the variable and then we just press dot and we have this equals so basically it's a way they are going to compare one with another so one of the reasons why i installed the rainbow brackets is now you can see that we have um another this is called method 
inside this if condition. So basically, I'm checking, hey, is the value that I have in memory represented by saved name equals to the value that we have here in pot name? So this is going to print true, the same name. If you change one letter, for example, this is uppercase, this is lowercase, then you are going to see, whoops, they are not the same anymore. So if you want to ignore case, you have equals ignore case. And now if I press Ctrl Shift F10, this is going to be true. But let's say that we need exactly the same. So it needs to be exactly the same. Okay, so we have the first condition. We know that the first condition uh, is evaluating to true. So if you come back here, the first condition is being evaluated to true. So basically the name is exactly the same. Then we need to compare the second condition. So we cannot have another if here. We could if we wanted, but then it would not be the same condition because you don't know if this was executed or not. So if you want to have like a second condition, then you would have like input name. Oh, sorry, not input name. Um, saved credit card number. So if saved credit card number is equals to input credit card number, then it's out same credit card so control shift f10 so you can see both of them but technically we have to use all of them together we should not just have them separately because it doesn't matter if one of them is true we need all of them to be true so i don't need to execute the for example the second one if the first one is not true but just since so since you are doing let's just Finish it with the saved security code is equals to uh, input security code. And then salt same um, security code. So control shift F10, you are going to see the same. As you can see, the last one is not true. But we are having three separate conditions when we actually need to have all of them together. It's like I want to execute this piece of code if every single one of them is true. So this is where the logical operator N comes in. So instead of having them separately, we are going to just put them together using a percent, a percent. So save the name equals, and then control C, control V. And then, as you can see here, it's getting pretty big. So I'm just press out one, save the security code, same thing and control v and now we are going to add here can buy else so let me remove here so if you want to just leave it here you can select and press ctrl slash so remember this is comment what the entire j and the compiler is going to do is completely ignore this so else out cannot buy pretty straightforward so let's see what this is going to print Control shift f10 cannot buy so why is that java is doing this first condition is true nice so we have the first if we go back here we have the first true so let me copy this and let me add here there you go Let's just make it a little bit smaller. Okay. So what Java is doing? First, it's evaluating the first one. Saved name equals input name. Yes, it's true because they are exactly the same. So this is being evaluated to true. And then we have this upper percent here. So and the second one is true or is false. So the credit card number we saw that it's exactly the same. So basically we have true and true. Now both of them, it results to true. We saw that true and true, true, but we still have another one. And the saved security code is equals to input security code. Oops, that one is not true. So we have here true and that one is resulting to false. So in the end, what's the result? True and false. True and false is false. 
And remember, if the result is false, basically we have this. We have if false. And you know that if it's false, if is not going to be executed. That's why here we saw else. So you can just put a breakpoint here, shift F9. And if you want to know the results here, you can also use the evaluate expression. So you can select everything here. If you want to see one by one, you can select everything. And then you click here, evaluate expression or Alt F8. Actually, in my case, it does not work. Oh, well, probably yours, it should work. So I have it here. If I evaluate, it's false. Then I can just re start removing. So if I remove this one, the last one, and then I execute, oh, I have true. So you can see exactly what is working and what's not working in your code. So since all of this is going to evaluate to false, what's going to happen? The else will be executed. So F nine and we have here cannot buy if we change here to 300 now it will result in true true and true and the result of true 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 is true that's why we can see we can buy so this is the the logical operator uh, end so this is also called short circuit why because java is smart once it sees that, for example, let's change here just the second one. And if we have like this, why do we call it short circuit? Because Java is going to do the following. It's going to evaluate from left to right. And then once Java's evaluate this one and it's false, well, if you look at the, the truth table, if you have one false, it doesn't matter how many truths you have in your conditional statement it's going to be false. So that's why Java, this is the Java behavior. Once it finds that one is false, Java will completely ignore the rest of the statement. So most of the time, this does not matter. But so you know, if you read somewhere, someone say, hey, the logic operator, a percent, a percent, and it's a short circuit. It means that once Java evaluates one of them to be like false, and when we see the or, it's one evaluated to true, but we are using a percent, it means end. So once one of them is false, Java will completely ignore it. Like there's no purpose for, for me and go and evaluate every single one of them because I already know that the result, if one is false, it will be false. So Java will completely ignore it, it will not evaluate this, and it will just go uh, straight to to the else so this is the logical operator end and we are going to see in the next video the logical operator or so i hope you enjoyed see you in the next video bye bye